we had this meeting at the Institute of Space Physics in New York. I said before we reach a final conclusion, we ought to throw into the pot still another object, a gravitationally completely collapsed object. Well, after you've used the phrase, a gravitationally completely collapsed object, ten times, you conclude you've got to get a better name. So that's when I switched to the word black hole. The word black hole, which John Wheeler coined, suddenly caught on. Everybody uh, adopted it. And from then on, uh, people around the world in, in, in Moscow, uh, in, uh, in um, America, in England and elsewhere, uh, could uh, uh, know they were speaking about the same thing. And uh, uh, not only that, but it suddenly uh, the whole range of concepts got through to the general public. And even science fiction writers uh, all of a sudden could uh, talk, talk about it. Tonight, my friends, we stand on the brink of a feat unparalleled in space exploration. If the data on my returning probe ship matches my computerized calculations, I will travel where no man has dared to go. Into the black hole? In, through, and beyond. Why, that's crazy. Ha! <laughs> Impossible! As soon as its dark contracts, its gravity becomes so strong that light can no longer escape. The region from which nothing can escape is called a black hole, and its boundary is called the event horizon. One might say of the event horizon what Dante said of the entrance to hell. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. I was once asked to actually be an adjudicator on a, the, a, an essay of which the subject was how to fall through a black hole and live. Now, the problem I had was that I wouldn't know how to give out the prize because if I said, well, that looks like a good essay, the only real way of showing that this was right was to actually use, to follow it, to do the experiment and fall in. But then having fallen in, possibly, I would assume taking the person who wrote the essay with you, the question would be, how do you tell the rest of the world? Do you take the prize in with you that you give to them? And what do they do with it when they get to the center? Believe me. I've been waiting a long time for someone like you to record this moment. Thank you, Doctor. Then I'm ready. Ready to embark on man's greatest journey. Certainly his riskiest. The risk is incidental compared to the possibility to possess the great truth of the unknown. There, long cherished laws of nature simply do not apply. They vanish. And life? Life? Life forever. If you were watching an astronaut, foolhardy enough to jump into a black hole, at some time on his watch, say 12 o'clock, he would cross the event horizon and enter the black hole. But no matter how long you waited, you would never see the astronaut's watch reach 12 o'clock. Instead, each second on the watch would appear to take longer and longer until the last second before midnight would take forever. Thus, by jumping into a black hole, one could ensure that one's image lasted forever. But the picture would fade very rapidly and grow so dim that no one could see it. As somebody disappears into a black hole, 
uh, as seen from the outside, you, it looks as though the time actually slows down and the person becomes who's, who's, who's moving, uh, in, uh, he, at least he's thinking, he's moving, he's perhaps talking in his spaceship at a normal rate, seems to slow down and ends up by being frozen in a particular position um, as seen by somebody watching him from the outside. And as seen from the outside, you never see what happens after that. The astronaut wouldn't notice anything special when his watch reached midnight and he crossed the event horizon into the black hole. Until, of course, he approached the singularity and was crushed into spaghetti. One can fall through this event horizon without feeling anything, without noticing it. After about a week of falling, one begins to feel the pinch and one extends longer and longer and gets slightly thinner. And, of course, one begins to get squeezed. Until one gets very long and very thin and rather nasty. Uh, by the end of two weeks, one's fallen right into the centre and one is, of course, dead. Before you lose sight of the outer world, uh, you, would, uh, you would see things happening and you would see them at a greater rate so that uh, it would look like a firework display. The frustration would be that although you would be able to see everything that happens in the future, it would be going so fast that from a scientific point of view, you would have no time to analyze it. Uh, you wouldn't be able to take it in. Um, and eventually things would be going off so fast and it would be so explosive that you yourself would be destroyed by the, uh, the explosion and that would, that would be the end. But it would be a very exciting way to end one's life. Uh, it would be the way I would choose if I, if I had the choice. In the long history of the universe, many stars must have burned up their nuclear fuel and collapsed in on themselves. The number of black holes may be greater than the number of visible stars, which totals about a hundred thousand million in our galaxy alone. We also have evidence that there is a very large black hole at the center of our own galaxy. Friends ask me, well, if a black hole is black, how can you see it? And I say, have you ever been to a ball? Have you ever watched the young men dressed in their black evening tuxedos and the girls in their white dresses whirling around, held in each other's arms, and the lights turned low, and all you can see is the girls. Well, the girl is the ordinary star, and the boy is the black hole. You can't see the black hole any more than you can see the boy, but the girl going around gives you convincing evidence there must be something there holding her in orbit. One evening, shortly after the birth of my daughter, Lucy, I started to think about black holes as I was getting into bed. My disability makes this rather a slow process, so I had plenty of time. Suddenly, I realized that the area of the event horizon must always increase with time. The increase in the area of the event horizon was very reminiscent of a quantity called entropy, which measures the degree of disorder of a system. It is a matter of common experience that disorder tends to increase with time if things are left to themselves. Jacob Beckenstein came into the office one day. Jacob, I said, it always troubles me when I put a hot teacup next to a cold teacup, I've increased by letting heat flow from one to the other the amount of disorder in the universe. But Jacob, if a black hole swims by and I drop both teacups into this, I've concealed the evidence of my crime, have I not? Beckenstein's a man of great integrity and he looked troubled and he came back to me later and he said, no, you have not concealed the evidence of your crime. The black hole 
records what's happened to you. Stephen Hawking read the paper in which Bekenstein announced this result, thought it was preposterous, and decided to prove it was wrong.